Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Jeremy Scott Films Podcast and Radio Show. Coming to you on this Thursday here really quick with an episode. Uh, a lot of you guys have been asking for it. We've been following uh, my Instagram uh, on the carnivore diet and my experience and experiment of eating on the carnivore diet for the past 14 days in a row. And I didn't share it a ton on YouTube or even on Instagram for that matter because I didn't want you guys to ask me 100 questions before I could um, kind of jot everything down and have it laid out and, and really give it a true 14 days with a little asterisk by it because obviously I'm going to throw in my own uh, twist along the way. And I think you guys should do it with any dieting protocol or anything that you try to see if it fits your lifestyle and what you're doing. Now, before I kick off, the carnivore diet, you guys, is pretty straightforward. It's eat only animal foods and stay away from plant foods. So basically, you're only eating meat 24-7, 365 every single day. Now, I'm going to break down this in detail and you guys are probably like, well, why the hell would you want to do that? That sounds crazy and stupid and unhealthy and insane. But believe it or not, there's more people out there doing it than you guys would lead to believe, especially if you're not in the uh, kind of health and fitness and nutritional world. And there's so many subcultures of how we eat and train and sleep and live our life. We're just so used to what we were taught in school, which is mostly bullshit. And so uh, anything I've tried over the past probably 10 years, it's for the sake of content um, for me to talk about it to blog about it, if I go do a speech on it, if I do obviously a podcast on it, which you guys are listening to, if I'm going to educate our clients and people on it, I want to have some sense of what I felt like doing it, what my experiences was, what are the drawbacks, what are the positive aspects of it, um, who are the people who started it, who follow it, what is the you know beta, what is the research I can dig into it, and give you my two cents. And now, before I say anything else, I'm not telling you guys to eat this way. I'm not telling you to change your life and, and just eat meat and don't eat plants. I am not a believer in that. Uh, I'm just doing this for the sake of content. I did this the same time I did carb backloading, the same time I went completely gluten-free, the same time I went uh, you know, paleo, the same time um, I tried the keto stuff. I'm willing to try anything for about a two-week span just to see um, how I feel and what my experience is. Now, I could you know, test it for a straight month. But I think after 14 days, I get the gist of it because I'm pretty diligent. And uh, if I have any slip ups, it, it's rare. And uh, I'm doing it for the sake of just educating you guys and giving you my two cents. Now, outside of my own experience here, I'm pulling a lot of research and beta from the internet uh, and from guys who I know have been doing it for a long time, who have been watching doing it. Chris Bell has been doing this for probably well over a year. Um, he says he feels great on the carnivore diet. Obviously, Sean Barker is kind of like one of the pioneers of it, who has written more content and more research on it. Um, Chris Cresser, he put out a ton of content on this as well. And there's a, there's a handful of other sources uh, I pulled from and followed and just to see what how they do it and how they feel. And obviously, I, you guys, my point is this. With every dieting protocol, when I say dieting protocol, I just mean like your lifestyle of eating. So when I say diet, I'm not like do a diet for a day. No, I'm talking about your dietary plan for your life. So your lifestyle of eating, whatever you guys are doing – if it's paleo, if it's Whole30, if it's gluten-free, if it's keto, if whatever the fuck you're into, be willing to change lanes and adjust. You don't have to be married to it. Yeah, I come from the intermittent fasting world and I don't ever eat breakfast, but if I'm in Europe and we're on a vacation and I typically eat at three o'clock, but we're staying at the W and they got the dopest ass free breakfast in the world. And I'm talking, when I say free breakfast, it's not like here's some eggs and bacon. I'm talking like it's a room full of all your favorite stuff and it's 1130 in the morning. Yeah, I'm going to eat that. So I'll move my window. My point is, is for you guys to shift and change with your lifestyle, what fits better for you. So don't feel like you have to be married to a set of rules if it doesn't fit your lifestyle and make you feel good and make you happy and fit what you're trying to do. So again, there's rules to everything, but there's meant to have a little autonomy and for you guys to bend and break them if it makes you feel better, look better, and move better through the course of your life. So again, super simple. My take on the carnivore diet, and I'm going to give you guys a quick breakdown of what is, I guess, listed out, which is acceptable, what I personally did, um, kind of the benefits and the drawbacks. But again, the first one, all of these eating protocols, you guys, they work essentially the exact same. They're putting you at an energy deficit or caloric deficit. So meaning it's taking away something and it's putting you in a negative and your output as a positive is so high, you're going to lose fat and lose weight. That's how all these work. If it's the whole 30, it's because they cut out a ton of food. If it's intermittent fasting, it's because it's shrinking down your eating window. If it's keto, it's basically because they're eliminating an entire macronutrient. Uh, if it's carnivore, they're eliminating basically everything but meat. So they all work the same. There's no magic to any of these. Now, people can say, oh, it's because it's, it changes this and this. Most of that is horseshit. 
and most of it can't really be proven, not at scale to where a lot of people are going to say, yeah, you know what, without a doubt, that's what it's going to do. So, and again, there's certain things where obviously fasting, when you start the protocols, if it's, you know, over, you know, 24 hours, 72 hours, 16 hours, there's certain things we can pull from, but most of these things, they only work because it's putting you in an energy deficit, and that's how you guys lose fat and lose weight. So, I don't mind what you guys choose to do, but just know that there's no eating protocol that's magic. The one that works best is the one that you're willing to do and live your life by. And most of us have all adopted some type of eating style and protocol, and we've made it fit our life and for what we want to do. I can't preface that enough. So with the carnivore diet, you guys, it means you're primarily getting all of your energy from proteins and fats, and you're consuming probably close to zero or minimal carbohydrates every single day if you're doing it right. Now, I'm going to read through my show notes. I have a ton of stuff here written down. But the carnivore diet basically consists of animal foods and animal foods alone. It's really that basic. You're eating things that at some point walked or crawled or flew or swam or otherwise uh, were born or hatched from parents. That's it. Uh, and again, you don't have to follow uh, any rules in the carnivore diet in terms of you know food timing and meal timing. You don't have to eat every two hours. You don't have to worry about some specific crazy macro breakdown or portion sizes. You simply eat when you're hungry and until you're full and you just wash, rinse, and repeat. Now, obviously, I'm a huge fan of tracking macros. I do think it's very easy to still overeat on the carnivore diet. For me, I could do it, but I don't think a lot of you guys probably will. And I'm not saying I don't know you personally. If you're making really shitty choices, like if your carnivore diet consists of you going to In-N-Out Burger and getting like seven Flying Dutchmen three times a day, yeah, you're going to be at a, a calorie surplus and you can gain weight. But for most of you guys, it's going to be really tough to do because you're eating like no carbohydrates, you're eating like no fruits, you're eating no grains, you're eating no vegetables, you're just eating meat. And for many of you, you don't love meat probably to the scale of where you can do it, especially if you're not adding all the sauces and uh, different things to kind of sex it up. So what is on the carnivore diet? Meat. Meat. Uh, Newsflash. Uh, things like steaks, burgers, the red meats in general are the main source for people on the carnivore diet. Because you're not eating carbohydrates or any plants at all, it's crucial that you get enough calories and the fattier meats are probably a little bit better. Um, things like poultry and organ meats are also fine. Um, and things like also the processed meats like uh, bacon and sausages are cool. But if you guys are going to go fish, uh, I would say the fattier fish. Things like salmon and sardines are probably the best choice. It's going to be really tough for you to get enough calories in overall if you guys are just eating like, you know, mahi-mahi or cod or something, which is basically all protein. There's no fats whatsoever. Um, you can also eat whole eggs on the carnivore diet. Um, and again, I, you need to do the fats, obviously, in the yolks for that. And then dairy. Um, things like milk, cheese, yogurt, butter all come from animals. They're technically, they are admissible, although most people on the carnivore diet admit these or they limit these drastically. And that's you know, for whatever reason, I can get into a handful of things that I've read on here, just for the fact of, in things like milk and yogurt, um, there is the lactose to sugar content in there, which is not, you know, ideal for people who are trying to go straight carnivore. So the other things inside of there, uh, bone marrow, bone broth, and that's pretty much the essence of what you're doing. And again, um, the fatty meat products, like lard and other fat dense food derived from the meats are good for you guys to go. So you can throw those in there as well. And then condiments, basically salt and pepper become your best friend in the carnivore diet. Um, and other things like, you know, it depends how technical you guys want to be. If it's salsa, horseradish, mustard, and other herbs and spices, they technically don't fit and they don't qualify. But again, I don't see it as a huge deal breaker. But if you're going to go through that, um, salt and pepper uh, are probably the biggest thing. Pink Himalayan sea salt. And then again, supplements wise, from all the stuff I looked at, really there's no supplements that really they... Uh, allow in the carnivore diet it's basically you just surviving off of meat and meat alone again i know you guys are listening like holy shit that just sounds super crazy and insane and i'm going to give you my two cents in a second here and again all the stuff we pull and i can go into these in greater detail a lot of people from the beta we read through and people we've talked to they obviously you know the report after going through it or being on the carnivore diet and staying on it faster weight loss or fat loss obviously because they're in a deficit uh, some people will say improve mental clarity. Some people say they actually have healthier digestion, which is going to shock a lot of you guys because I'm sure you're thinking, well, if you're only eating meat, how can you take a shit? Which I'll touch on that in a second. Uh, and then some people even say like improved athletic performance. And again, 
it's it's tough to say with those because we never know where people are starting at. So if you guys are out there eating a bunch of processed horse shit every single day, and you go to just eating like legit, you know, healthy uh, meats with proteins and aminos in them, you probably are going to feel better if your body's you know filled full of shit. You'd be surprised some of the nutrition logs I read. Uh, not so much now. Pe the people I have now are actually pretty legit and gangster. I'll get a few here there that are doing some really crazy stuff. But man, some people, especially when we meet them, essentially like they they come off the street. They're not one of our programs. They haven't. They don't know me from you know Coach Rick down the road. Uh, and they come in here and we pull up their food log and it's like in the morning they had like Starbucks chai tea horse shit with like a biscuit. And then lunch they had like Sabaro. And then at dinner, they stopped at uh, Olive Garden. And it's like their entire day is like fast food. And it's just an abundance of carbohydrates and sugars and processed nonsense. And so for those people, obviously, I'm sure they will, you know, have better performance and, and mental clarity and all these things. But for you guys already eating a balanced diet, I don't see the meat alone just doing that. But that's just my two cents. So, okay. So my experiment for me personally, uh, typically every protocol I do, I try it for at least 14 days. Some things I do for 30 days. A carnivore diet I did for just... 14 days. I felt that was enough for me personally. Um, I planned out to do 10 and I stretched out to 14 just to give it a, a handful of extra days, partially because it's super easy uh, and I was too lazy to run to the store. And we have uh, some really quality meat places around here that we can get up some legit steaks. And so that was uh, why, why I stretched out a couple days. So 14 days is what I did carnivore diet wise. <sighs> the caveat, what did I do outside of eating just meats? Uh, me personally, I did athletic greens every single day. I wanted to make sure I had an abundance of micronutrients inside my diet. That's just kind of something I wasn't willing to give up or shift. So if that's technically not carnivore to my diehard people listening, I understand that. But I'm not willing to give up the biotin um, and the B vitamins and all the micronutrients and the probiotics for that matter. And so I would take Athletic Greens every single day, which has a probiotic blend into it. I drink coffee every single day. I would have, uh, for electrolytes, uh, Gatorade Zero or Powerade Zero to have electrolytes because obviously if you're devoid of carbohydrates um, and you're not getting as much uh, salt in the potassium balance you're normally used to, obviously things are going to be thrown off. Outside of that, I did one grape synergy. So if you guys know what I'm talking about, it's uh, the GT's kombucha uh, synergy with the chia seeds in it just because I wanted to make sure I could take a shit uh, on, uh, on day number one. And so I did that. Uh, on day number six, I had a really long training session in day and I just wanted to eat something different. So I actually had a half a cup of oatmeal with chia seeds in there as well. Uh, again, it just never hurt. I'm a huge fan of chia seeds. So I wanted to throw those in there about, uh, about halfway through. And the only other thing outside of that that wasn't really quote unquote approved was my wife sabotaged me like she tends to do. Uh, no, in all seriousness, she went to this event where they had a chef make all these little treats and pastries and she brought home this little box. It was really small. But they were like legit, like some kind of special Rice Krispie treats they made at this event she went to. And not like the shitty store-bought ones. I'm talking like legit, like probably like your grandma made, but like on crack. And uh, I ate two of those on Easter. Man, they're like super addicting. I forget like how awesome Rice Krispie treats are, like real ones. I, I, I mean, I could be 400 pounds easily because they taste so amazing. But anyways, that's the only thing you guys I ate outside of the list. Outside of that, most of my food for 14 days came from steaks, uh, T-bones, uh, fillets and uh, I did a couple of New York strips as well. Uh, burger, uh, whether it be you know ground sirloin, typically, and then I went with fish. I ate uh, salmon was the only fish that I ate personally. I'm not a huge sardines fan; it just kind of creeps me out. So most of my food, 90% of it, came from steaks, burgers, and salmon. The only things I ate outside of that was I had eggs as well, and then I had um, some cottage cheese uh, throughout. And then I would drink bone broth. I drink bone broth every single day, which is a great habit to get into. If you guys don't, the, the benefits are actually amazing. Uh, and then the bone broth, I would just uh, grind up some uh, Himalayan pink salt up in there. And the only other things I used for my stuff was salt, pepper. I used a primal ketchup and then obviously mustard. And that was basically what I seasoned everything with. But if you use salt and pepper stuff correctly, um, you tend to be okay. And then uh, I didn't use coconut oil or anything to cook my stuff. We have these nonstick pans, so I, I could get away with that. And I ate, uh, other than the half cup oatmeal, for 14 days I ate no grains, no fruits, and no vegetables, which was definitely a shock for me. And it's a little bit weird at first because I'm used to them being so filling and helpful. And without having the vegetables, it's uh, a little bit different. But I will say this, I never found myself starving and like I needed to eat food. I wanted to eat different things because we crave stuff as humans depending on what we're used to. And obviously I'm, a, I'm pretty... Uh, 
habit-based pattern person. So without having the pattern and the routine of cauliflower rice or Brussels sprouts, which I usually do with my steak, it's a little bit different. So I just eat more meat uh, in essence. And so uh, I never felt like I was starving or super drained of energy, uh, no more than normal, because obviously I work a ton and I have a crazy schedule. Um, other than that, I had no problems going to the bathroom, which I immediately thought would be a little bit different and unique since I'm used to eating probably 20 to 30 grams of fiber per day. But uh, I had no problems going to the bathroom. I could take a dump uh, like clockwork, pretty much basic. A little bit different probably the first day or two. But uh, outside of that, it was fine. I think what you'll find is when you guys are eating a healthy amount of dietary fats and you're staying hydrated, regardless of fiber or not, you're gonna be able to go to the bathroom relatively easily and regularly if your body is healthy. I think that's probably one of the, the biggest things. I think fiber, I don't wanna say it's overrated, because I do think it's crucial and it's key for you guys. I mean, people are gonna crush me for that and there's certain research you can pull both ways. But I find when I have chia seeds in my diet, I can take a better poop and I feel empty and I feel good and lean and, and healthy and I don't feel bloated, fat, and gross and disgusting. On the same note, I think some people put too much stock into fiber and not enough stock into healthy fats and uh, staying hydrated. So I think if you guys can keep those two in check, um, sky is the limit for you guys. And so I would urge you to make sure when you're looking at your food, and going to the bathroom. We'll do another podcast on taking a poop. I already have one, uh, but I have like a one on gut health. I'm gonna go into great detail about it. But I think healthy fats and, and fluid and probiotics are key for that. So um, carnivore diet itself, let's kind of break this down a little bit. The reason why it works, um, in essence, it's it puts you at a, it's calorie restricting. It puts you guys at a deficit because it's eliminating a ton of stuff uh, that you normally would eat in your day. And so when you have these rules in place where you can't eat X, Y, and Z, and you can only eat A, it makes it pretty basic. And obviously the carnivore diet is different uh, than the, the keto diet in the sense of this. Let's, let's kind of break down the two. If you're eating large amounts of meat, but you're only eating once or twice a day and adding extra fats in, your diet is likely to be ketogenic for that matter. So they can be very similar. But the difference is when you look at how... Uh, the, Keto is broken down for you guys, which is more popular than carnivore, obviously, and less controversial, even though a lot of people, you know, crush both of them. I think from fats, 60 to 70% of your energy is coming from fat if you're doing keto, and 20 to 30% of the energy is coming from proteins if you're doing keto, and 5 to 10% of your stuff is coming from carbohydrates, where if you're going carnivore diet, your main nutrients are proteins and fats, where keto is, is more fat heavy, and the amount of carbohydrates you're eating in the carnivore diet is essentially zero. Where if you're going keto, you're probably going 5 to 20% of your overall calories are coming from some form of carbohydrates. And then obviously the foods allowed when you're doing carnivore, animal foods, meat, fish, eggs, bone, broth, bone marrow, and maybe some dairy if you're into that. Or if you're doing keto, you're talking animal products. You can do plant products. You can do coconut oil, avocados, and some nuts and some seeds, which basically are not part of the carnivore diet. So again... Overall benefits of the carnivore diet, if you guys would try it. Obviously, weight loss or fat loss works because it's putting you guys in a deficit. Um, some people, you know, can argue a handful of other things inside of there. Um, depending on whose blood work you look at or pull up, I'm not going to say anything too controversial. I will say some people say lower inflammation. And so I'm going to read this here um, from the Onnit site. I think Sean Heisen actually wrote this. And this is, I'm going to go quote unquote here. And I quote, according to some vegans, Fat-rich animal foods promote inflammation to a degree that's on par with smoking cigarettes, which I think is fucking nonsense, first of all. If you're a vegan out there saying people eating animal fat-rich products, the inflammation is to the same degree as smoking cigarettes, you are a fucking crazy person. I'm sorry if that offends anybody. Um, I just don't believe it. There's so much fear-mongering that goes on with these Netflix documentaries, and I love Netflix, but when you look at who's making these documentaries and these films, there's always an agenda behind it with everything, whether it be financial or political or something wrapped up in the two so when someone's saying like oh well, when you're feeding your kid meat it's like feeding them cigarettes it's the dumbest thing i've literally ever heard like cigarettes are fucking cigarettes dude like it's the reality of it we can talk about uh, I, i'm super passionate about it because it, it really just bothers me how people watch a documentary for 47 minutes and now they're an expert on something and they, that becomes their religion and their truth and you can't move their mind off it because well if it's on tv it's true no, if it's on TV, it's not true. There's a lot of people who have a lot of money. They can put a lot of shit out there. And just because it's sexy and sensationalized doesn't mean you have to believe it. Even if a doctor is saying it, double check your work. Message a handful of people before you start making these bold and crazy claims. So I'm sorry, you guys. That was my side right here. The truth is, 
However, that you can actually lower inflammation on like a carnivore style diet. A 2013 study in the journal Metabolism compared subjects who ate high fat, low carb diet to those who ate low fat, high carb diets. The calories were restricted in the groups, but the high fat eaters had lower markers of systematic inflammation after 12 weeks. As a result, the researchers concluded that a high fat eating may be more beneficial to cardiovascular health. Now, that's just one study that they're pulled up in here. Um, but a lot of people saying that lower inflammation um, can happen when they're, when they're eating just a meat-based diet. Um, and again, lower inflammation typically means you know less achy joints. You don't have as much joint pain. And there's evidence that eating more gelatinous proteins, as you find in bone broths, collagens, and gelatin, um, can improve your overall cartilage health. And so that's where that's coming from. And so again, I'm not saying just eat meat, but if you guys do throw a bone broth in and drink bone broth every single day, I think it's it's a great thing that some people know about, uh, but it can help overall. And again. More benefits to the carnivore diet. Some people say higher testosterone, which we could go into. The American uh, Clinic Journal has a study here. I don't think you guys truly care about it. And then some people will say uh, fewer digestive problems. Now, I'm going to read this as well. We've been told how important it is to eat fiber our whole lives. We've been sold everything from brand muffins to Metamucil to make sure we get enough. But the carnivore dieters think that it's more trouble than it's worth. And some science proves it right or wrong. Now, again, I'm not saying don't eat fiber. I'm just reading you guys here from the beta that I'm pulling up. A 2012 study in the World Journal of Gastroenterology investigated the effects of reducing fiber intake in people with chronic constipation. Constipation. They completed the opposite of what most doctors would recommend. Subjects were told to consume no fiber whatsoever for two weeks. Now, let me say that again. Subjects were told not to consume fiber for two weeks. They were allowed to increase their fiber intake to a level they felt comfortable with to follow a high fat fiber diet. Incredibly, most of the subjects were doing so well they opted to continue on a zero fiber plan. The study lasted six months. Those who ate high fiber reported no change in their condition, but those who ate no to small amounts of fiber noted significant improvement in their systems, including reduced gas, bloating, and straining. Furthermore, the ones on a zero fiber diet actually increased the frequency of their bowel movements. The reason Fiber-filled eating could be problematic for the gut isn't clear, but carnivore dieters blame certain compounds in plant foods as a source of digestive issues. Now, there's a million things that can go into this, you guys, um, but I will say there is certain things like uh, with gluten um, and certain that are common and other things that are common with certain fruits and greens and beans and grains and nuts and seeds that can contribute to inflammation and autoimmune disorders such as IBS, leaky gut, and more. Now, obviously, every person is different, um, and I'm not telling you guys to do that. I'm just reading for you here what I've seen. And again, I did it. I felt good on the carnivore diet. I didn't feel bad. I went to the bathroom easily. No problem whatsoever. I didn't have any issues. So again, that's just my two cents on it. I'm just giving you guys the kind of full breakdown. So um, overall, I do think there is uh, benefits to it that can help you guys. I guess the biggest drawbacks uh, to me from it, if people were to do it, probably the nutrient deficiencies is, is clearly probably the biggest one. Um, there's four basically micronutrients that are specifically really, really hard to obtain when you guys are eating just meat. And probably vitamin C being the first one, I would say vitamin E being the next one. Uh, vitamin K2, which is a fat-soluble vitamin, and then obviously calcium. Uh, those are probably the hardest four to get from eating just meat. Um, and obviously, if you guys are going to do carnivore and you do dairy, um, that will cover probably the, the K2 and the calcium. However, if you guys don't like organ meats, uh, it's going to be tough for you to, to get the rest of those in there, so you probably have to supplement with something. It's also important to note that vitamin C is, is really heat-sensitive, so only fresh or very gently cooked organ meats will have a decent amount for you guys to pull from. So I guess the downfall of the carnivore diet would be that you guys are not getting an array of everything. You're not getting enough uh, micronutrients and the vitamins and minerals that you need every single day to you know, look and move and feel your best. And you know, obviously if you're not taking a probiotic, uh, there's not gonna be a ton of you know, gut health things that are gonna help you out there. That's why I chose to take Athletic Greens and I threw chia seeds in there incrementally because I do think the omegas in there are important even though I can get those from salmon and, and other uh, meats as well. So I'm gonna give you guys a quick breakdown of what like a day in the life of a carnivore diet would look like. 
And obviously you guys can take this as an outline and you can sprinkle in vegetables and other things and it looks like a normal day we would recommend to our people. So an example of like a day on the carnivore straight diet, you guys would wake up uh, and drink your coffee, black. And if you wanna go whole milk, you could go dairy products obviously. You guys would do scrambled eggs and bacon, pretty simple. Uh, for lunch, you guys could do like a ribeye steak uh, seasoned with salt and pepper. Again, super, super simple. If you guys wanted a snack, you could do a couple bone broth maybe a couple legit cheese slices, again, simple day. And then for dinner, you guys could do uh, maybe some burgers seasoned with, you know, cayenne pepper, garlic powder, or have like a salmon, uh, you know, with some garlic powder or pepper on it, really simple stuff. So again, it's not a crazy thing to break that down. It's just, you don't have any vegetables in there. You don't have any greens in there. You don't have any fruits in there. I've heard far crazier things and seen far insaner stuff. And in fact, I'd argue this, I think the average person would benefit from going this route as opposed to what they're currently doing. And the reason I said is because I think the, and I'm not talking about you guys who are smart here, who track macros, who eat real food, who are invested, who have had a coach, if you've done any of our programs. I'm talking the average Joe in America who is not active, who goes through a drive through two, three times a day, who shops at a grocery store inside all the middle aisles and fills their body full of processed bullshit. If they were to go carnivore, they would lose weight. I think they abundantly would get healthier because they're cutting out all the sugars, all the chemicals, all the things that are really dragging them down and causing them to have inflammation and probably causing them some issues like IBS or leaky gut or a myriad of other problems. So I think it can benefit that person. Uh, and again, obviously somebody who is, you know, going for, you know, fat loss or weight loss, obviously there's a benefit to it there as well. But again, that's just my two cents. I just wanted to try it uh, and go through it and see how I felt personally and Oddly enough, just a recap, I didn't feel like I didn't have energy. I didn't feel run down. I didn't feel sick. Um, I didn't die. Um, I actually felt really good on it. And then basically all I ate for 14 days was meat and I took athletic greens and I had you know two other many things throughout there, which again, if you're gonna do carnivore diet, I would suggest you guys do a cheat meal anyways. And so whether that be, whether you wanna go with no carbs on that as well, it's your choice. Or if you wanna throw in something a little bit funky to keep your sandy, you could do it. Now, would I prescribe this to any of our clients? No. Would I suggest to any of you guys? No. I would say you can do carnivore diet principles, but still take athletic greens and still eat some green vegetables, you know, a couple times a day. And don't, you know, fear fruit and you don't have to fear grains. But if you're a person out there struggling to find something that fits for you, if you're struggling with inflammation, if you're struggling with gut problems, maybe you really strip down your diet and start with really basic things like proteins and greens. I think that's key. I'm never gonna tell you guys not to eat green vegetables or cut them out of your diet. I don't think it's causing many of you problems or issues. I think if you looked at the scope of your day, it's probably alcohol and things in a bag or a box that are not ideal for you that are really dragging you down. But um, I'm not gonna vilify any eating protocol or dieting protocol. If it works for people and they feel good and they feel healthy, they should for certainly do it. Do I think the carnivore diet is an easy lifestyle for people to follow? No, I do not. I think for the average person who is social, who wants to do uh, family outings and things and is not super diligent and uh, they can't adhere to it, they're not gonna want to. They're gonna want more variance and more choice and more selection and more products and have more fun with their food. And uh, so I don't think the average person is probably a great candidate for it, but I do see how it works and I do see it's pretty basic. And I think if you guys were to try something similar to it, if you're eating healthy fats, you'll have no problem going to the bathroom and you'll actually you know, obviously have an abundance of proteins and healthy fats in your system. So hopefully you guys enjoyed kind of my breakdown of it. Again, I'm always down to try something. If you guys ever want to send me an idea, I'm happy to give my two cents on it or give my shake on it. Um, there's certain things I'm not willing to try or willing to do. Uh, I'm not willing to just like, I met somebody who did like all fruit diet for like 30 days. He only ate fruit for 30 days straight. I remember we're at dinner. Uh, God, who was I with? I think we're like, God, I swear BJ Gadur was there and Dave Jack was there and guy was there and he's, he's telling the story. He's like, I'm only eating fruit for 30 days. And he's a, a, a taller, a leaner guy on average anyway, a runner. And so he was, uh, he had lost weight on it, um, even though it's an abundance of sugar every single day, which I'm not vilifying sugar, but when you're eating that much fruit, I, I do think the sugar is a little bit of overkill. And he said, uh, he said he never had cleaner poops in his life, which uh, obviously there's a lot of, of fiber and, and things in that. But he said he only ate fruit and he said like even his, his poop would start to look like fruit colored, like so even like his poop would look like kind of like a watermelon, like obviously still like poop, but uh, like a little bit of hint of pink. And uh, yeah, he just said he had the cleanest poops ever. I do remember that, it kind of stuck out to me. I just remember thinking to myself, I'm like, I'm like shit dude, I'm like, I don't think I could do that for like one day. 
little, I mean, I could if I had to, but like, I don't want to. It just seems, and I love fruit too. Like I love pineapple just as much as the next set, but man, it just seems, uh, it seems like it would cause me way more harm than good. And so I would opt to not try something like that. But again, if you guys are out there eating a certain way and you want my two cents on it, please hit me up. I've probably already tried it. Um, there's certain things I'm not a fan of, obviously. And again, I'm not going to vilify anything. I just want you guys to be able to experiment and try things in your life that help you look better, move better, and feel better. And whether it be adopting one or two different protocols, so you take something that keto does great, and you take something that gluten-free does great, or you take something that carnivore does well, and you mix it with intermittent fasting, I'm a huge fan of it. I think there's something out there that works for everybody. And that's the beauty of fitness and the beauty of nutrition, that we all are different people. And I think sometimes doctors and coaches try to prescribe us and put us in a certain box and make us, you know, be in, in a certain mold or a certain way and it's not meant for all of us and we're all uniquely different with our lifestyles if we have kids and jobs and travel and how we train and what we want to get out of our fitness in our life and so this is just a you know an experiment uh, for me to study and learn more uh, about food and the power it has and how it makes me feel and just uh, really dig in and give you guys some hopefully quality information so again most of you guys will never try this uh, and again I'm not recommending it I'm not suggesting it. I'm not becoming the, the poster boy for uh, carnivore eating but I do see the benefits of it for some people in, in certain lifestyles or at least, you know, giving it a try in certain protocols and knowing if people will, you know, message me on this and crush me on this and I can't believe you do that. It's so unhealthy to your body. Listen here. Um, I don't ask for anybody's opinion. Um, and it, this is just a, a tip for life in general. Don't give anybody advice unless they ask you for it. Don't criticize anybody unless they ask you for it. They don't want your fucking opinion. I can promise you that. Um, I for surely don't as well. Um, I have people when I post my photos on IG, they'll be like, oh man, you should really go vegetarian. You really go vegan. I'm like, no, I'm okay, bro. Um, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know my situation and my lifestyle and how I feel and what I go through every day. Um, and to tell me to eat a certain way because you have a certain belief is, uh, you have the right to tell me that. And I have the right to ignore the fuck out of you too, because I just really don't care. But the point I'm driving at is when we go through and we do this, there's something that's going to work for each of us. Um, and it's up to us to find that out. I think it's you guys experimenting and finding what you feel best on it and what you want to do. Um, and that's really all this is about. And again, I'm happy to uh, share my experience with you. And for everybody who says, like, I couldn't believe you do this because it's so unhealthy for you. Look, dude, there was a time in my life where, you guys, I didn't eat a vegetable for probably four years. I, I might be exaggerating that a little bit, but I would say there's at least two to three solid years where I did not eat a single vegetable. I can promise you that. And I did not take a single vitamin. I did not have a single probiotic. I ate almost nothing filled with micronutrients other than like proteins um, from fats. And I drank alcohol a lot. Um, and when I would drink, I would drink like 20 fucking beers in a row or like crushing Everclear. If you guys know what that is, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and I would chew tobacco every single day and do drugs on top of that. Like I was the unhealthiest fucking person you can probably find out there. And that didn't kill me and I didn't die. And so at the current state I'm at of how I sleep and live and all the, the micronutrients and supplements and the things I do take um, and the recovery protocols I go through, for me to try the carnivore diet for 14 days is nowhere near, nowhere near anywhere of my rock bottom of my eating what I'm doing. And there's literally thousands of people out there who are doing this diet every single day and they feel amazing on it and they feel great and they feel like that this has been their savior for them. And so um, I'm here just to educate you guys and, uh, and give me my two cents on it. So again... Not suggesting you do it, but I do think you guys can learn a lot from really auditing how you eat, how you train, how you live, how you sleep, and uh, seeing if there are things you can't tweak or make better to make your life easier, healthier, and happier. And so I'm happy to present it to you guys. So if there's anything else you guys want to hear on the podcast, shoot me a message, hit me up, let me know. I'm happy to record it if I can speak on it whatsoever. And if I'm going to try one of these, obviously give me a month or two because with my travel schedule and what I have going on, sometimes it's hard to uh, dig into something like this if it doesn't fit uh, into my current uh lifestyle and program. But uh, if you're on iTunes right now, stop. Don't be a lazy ass. Drop me a five star. Leave a comment. Tell your friends this is the, your favorite podcast of all time and uh, share it with them and uh, enlighten them and give them uh, something to educate themselves or something to just listen to when they're walking their dog or on the treadmill or they're in their car or on their commute to work. If, if I can help educate them or help entertain them or whatever uh, I'm doing here, uh, I'm happy to do it because there's literally thousands and thousands of you guys listening and not nearly as many of you guys subscribe. So subscribe to the podcast, drop a five star, leave a comment. It truly does mean the world to me and it helps me uh, more than you guys know. And it, it keeps me going. It keeps me pumping these out because there's a lot of things I could be doing right now with my time to make a lot more money and have a lot bigger impact. But uh, I want to help you guys. And if I can do it by sharing my voice on different 
eating protocols and training protocols and just lifestyle stuff in general that I see and I find in my life, I'm happy to do it. So thank you guys for listening. Uh, I truly do appreciate it. So uh, a lot of fun stuff coming down the pipe. We have one on gut health, a really detailed one on taking a poop, uh, digestive tract, uh, microbiota, a lot of those things, and kind of doing uh, messing with some dieting protocols. I also have a finance one I want to get out for you guys, which I parallel fitness and finance together because I believe they're both important. So if you guys care about money, which I'm sure you do because you spend probably 65 to 70 percent of your life working for it, I'm going to give you um, some really, really good uh, hacks and tips that have helped me along the way because I'm a guy who was who I moved here over a decade ago broke as shit and. Uh, I have more money today than I ever thought I'd have in my life, and uh, it didn't happen magically, and it was very diligent and uh, very thoughtful the way that I went about it and the decisions that I made. So hopefully if I can share my experience, it can help some of you guys if you're struggling with student loan debt or car debt or home debt or, or you're kind of drowning in, in your situation, you want to know how to get out of it, I'm going to I'm gonna drop that on you maybe tomorrow, even if I can't, or, or probably by the weekend, but I'm going to hope to do it tomorrow. So uh, stay tuned. So until next time, you guys, eat well, train hard, be nice to people, and please, you guys, Keep doing shit you love with people you enjoy because your life is too short not to. I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.